Hello, Matt here. Welcome to WanderingUpward.org, Pollinating Sustainability. I'm going to give you a walkthrough today of a Florida garden that is flourishing in the summer. A lot of people think that you can't grow anything in Florida in the summer. Well, uh, this is a perennial garden. This is a food forest garden. And I planted this, um, it planted it in two sections. This side over here is about uh, probably nine months old. And this side over here is probably about four months old. So I'm just gonna walk you through and show you what we have here and what you can plant in Florida. Um, this is my loquat tree. Um, it's starting to get some kind of funny brown thing on the leaves. I'm looking into figuring out what that is. Um, these are, so I put some paths through here, some kind of meandering paths that I'm gonna be following through this. Um, this is chaya. This is a delicious edible cooked green, giant leaves, full sun, flourishes in the summer, tastes great. We've been eating it every day. Um, easy to grow, grows from clippings. These are tomatoes. I didn't, you'll see all the, a lot of tomatoes in here. Here's tomatoes here. We've gotten pounds and pounds of tomatoes. We're eating dried tomatoes, um, tomatoes in our salads. I mean, they're everywhere. I didn't plant any of these tomatoes. These all came in the, from the compost that I made. Um, this is Okinawa spinach right here. This is a delicious raw green, uh, grows all through the summer, full sun, doesn't need much care. Uh, there's another Okinawa spinach back here growing in that. Um, these are some perennial chives. I just planted a, this tiny clump of these and these take no care. You don't have to worry about them, they taste delicious. Um, you won't have to buy onions again if you have those, they taste just like onions. These are wild blueberries. Another wild blueberry here. This is a cranberry hibiscus. Just stuck this in the ground a little bit ago. Cranberry hibiscus does amazing here. Those are edible leaves. You can put them in salads, you can cook them. They have a, like a slightly tart yet sweet cranberry taste to them. Delicious. There's more chives. This is a pomegranate tree. This is Suriname spinach. Uh, another delicious edible uh, green, eat it right off the tree. You can see how tender it is, has a great taste. You can cook it. Um, also, you can see it's probably 90 something degrees out right now. This thing will flourish in full sunlight, part shade. It doesn't care too much. Um, grow it from clippings, does great. See more volunteer tomatoes. I don't even put trellises on these tomatoes. I just let them go and they've been doing great. Pick them right before they get red because um, the bugs get them if they get red. These are volunteer squash. Squash, I don't have, have too much luck with squash. I just kind of let them go and let them die. This is a, a Malabar spinach. Um, this was planted probably a month ago from a little tiny seedling. And you can see what it's doing now, edible leaves. You can eat them raw, you can cook them, put them in omelets, tastes great. They grow all through the summer. As you can see, he does all right in shade. They also love full sunlight. This is a papaya tree, good Florida plant. Here's another cranberry hibiscus. It's been uh, here a little bit longer. See more tomatoes, more tomatoes, tons of tomatoes, all those tomatoes. And these are just, I didn't plant, like I said, I didn't plant any of these. They just, they're growing out onto the pavement here and all over the place and doing great. You'll see more back there, all over. This is a peach tree, um, University of Florida. Got some peach varieties that, that do great. This is a lemongrass, it's ready to be harvested. Lemongrass, you go down here and you you chop these shoots and you dice them up and uh, that's what they use in Indian dishes and you can use them in any kind of dish for a nice little lemon flavor. This is uh, Cuban oregano. Also, you can eat it raw, big juicy leaves. Um, great as a flavoring for soups. Um, put little pieces in your salad, has a pretty cool unique taste. Um, this is shiso. Um, I don't know, shiso or shisho, one of the two. It's like a purple, the bottom is purple, the bottom leaf is purple. It has a kind of a funky taste to it. It does great. It's a good seasoning. Um, you can look up, there's a lot of different recipes from it. They use it in, in India. I've just been chopping up and putting a little bit in whenever I'm cooking greens. Um, there's another tomato, it's growing on my but this is uh, on my blackberry trellis here. This is a, a blackberry, a thornless blackberry. Um, you can see down in here, got some blackberries on there. We picked a lot of blackberries off this one plant 
And this is all kind of experimental, We're just putting like one of each plant. And I'm expanding this garden out so we can have plenty to eat, which I mean, most of our greens, actually all of our greens have been coming from the garden in the summer, greens in the summer. Um, this is an orange tree right here. Doing great, orange, orange trees don't mind part shade. Um, against common belief there. Um, this is a yucca, and yucca has edible root. You can dig it up. This thing thrives. We just took these right here. This is like a clipping from yucca and stuck it in the ground diagonal. And you can see this is where the yucca popped up down at the end of that. We stuck a, one of these, you can see another one here, stuck it in the ground diagonally. And it came up from here, came up back there. So they do great. Um, the, this right here is a Mexican sunflower. And plant these and they absorb nutrients from the ground. You just chop them off and they're great for composting. Uh, this is mint. I have the mint separated off. I mean, I buried this aluminum barrier probably like six inches in the ground so they don't send the rhizomes out because mint will absolutely take over. And we make a ton of tea. We have other mint patches and make a lot of tea out of it. And uh, you can flavor things with it. This I thought was a weed. So I almost killed it yesterday when I was putting the pads in. This is um, lemon balm. And it does, it was doing great before I traumatized it. And that's about it. But I'm, I've got a lot more stuff to plant. I mean, this is only the beginning of it. And like I said, this is summer Florida. Everything's doing great. Um, this, like I said, also this garden has been here for about eight months. And I just put these pads in here because I had little stepping stones and it was just hard to get around and, and pick everything. But I probably pulled three or four weeds out of this entire garden. It, uh, and most of them came from the compost. So if you do the sheet mulching right, um, you will have no problems with weeds. Literally, weeds have been no problem. And there's a lot more room for planting in here. Um, I'm gonna put, oh yeah, also, I just pulled out a whole bunch of sweet potatoes that were, you couldn't even see the ground in this, this entire garden. You couldn't see the ground because it was covered in sweet potatoes, but they were kind of taking everybody's sunlight. So I pulled them out and harvested about 15 pounds of, of uh, sweet potatoes. So uh, sweet potatoes, another great crop. I'm about to plant a lot more in here. I'm just gonna keep an eye on them a little bit better. So yeah, I hope that inspires you to, to get some of these plants and plant yourself a garden. Also zero maintenance. I, since I planted this, I have not touched the garden until now. And I probably spent about four hours out here today, um, but that was just because I never put paths in it. So I just put these paths in and pull a lot of the other stuff out. And that's all the maintenance it takes. You don't have to touch these gardens. Um, these, these Malabar spinaches, they reseed themselves. Um, everything else is perennial. So it just keeps going and going and going. This shiso reseeds itself. Um, obviously tomatoes reseed themselves. Um, I'm about to put some Everglade tomatoes in here, which are Florida tomatoes, Florida native tomatoes, which I absolutely love. Um, they have a, they're like a little cherry sized tomato and they don't have the, the, uh, I don't know, that slimy part of the, I don't like tomatoes, that aftertaste doesn't sit with me well. So they don't have that. So for a non-tomato liker, try some Everglade tomatoes. They're, uh, they're a whole different take on tomato. So there you go. Good luck.